vor. We'll start at four minutes after. Thanks for coming. Well, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone to our federal and state child labor laws webinar um, presented by U.S. Department of Labor and New York State Department of Labor. Um, we had a conversation with Sarah a couple of weeks ago, and, we, and she says she has some great information that a lot of counselors were looking for. And we said, let's have a webinar. So here we are. Um, here's our uh, disclaimer that we always have to put up. You may not re reproduce, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this webinar is being recorded. It'll be on our YouTube channel. Our presenters today are Sarah Decker from the U.S. Department of Labor, Nejo Aurora from the New York State Department of Labor, and they're going to give us a lot of information. And we're going to record it. And we're also going to we're also going to uh, share their powerpoints um, tomorrow to all of the attendees and registrants. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat, and we'll answer them when it's time. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Sarah. Is that, what, is that the right order? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I'll go first. Okay. I am going to share my screen. Um, okay, let's see here. Can yeah. you guys see um, the presentation? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Decker. I am the Community Outreach and Resource Planning Specialist for the U.S. Department of Labor Wage and Hour Division. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about um, the federal child labor laws. Um, we kind of think of child labor, you might think of it as kind of like an archaic term. Um, and you might think that child labor violations are something that happened like, you know, in the past. But unfortunately, that is not true. Um, we still see a number of child labor violations, even in New York. Um, we still see injuries um, and deaths. They are very rare, thankfully, but they still happen. Um, and currently, we are seeing a huge increase in child labor violations. Um, in the last five years, our agency has seen an 88% increase in child labor violations nationwide. Um, why is this happening? Um, there are probably a number of factors uh, from what I've seen since the pandemic. Um, it seems like employers are, are looking for people to, to fill employment gaps in their workforce, um, and they're not finding workers for whatever reason. Uh, so they, they seem to be looking to a younger workforce to kind of fill these positions. Um, and of course, minors can work, um, but they must be employed in compliance with the labor laws. Um, we have to make sure that they're safe. Um, they can't do certain things that are considered to be hazardous. And depending upon how old they are, they can't uh, work certain hours. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. Um, um, I'm going to go through the, the federal child labor laws. Um, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. 
Uh, and also, um, as I'm going through the presentation, uh, if you do have any thoughts or insights that you'd like to share as individuals that work with, with kids all day, every day, I would love to hear them. Um, so please feel free to also share that with me. Um, I'm also joined today by my colleague, Kim Fung. Um, he is the Regional Enforcement Coordinator for Child Labor, uh, the Fair Labor Standards Act, and the Family Medical Leave Act. Um, okay, so with that brief intro, I am going to um, get us started here. Um, just a brief disclaimer, this presentation is intended as general information only and does not carry the force of legal opinion. Um, so I'm going to briefly introduce you to my agency. Um, I work for the Wage and Hour Division, which is a civil law enforcement agency within the U.S. Department of Labor. Uh, we got our start in 1938 with the creation of the Fair Labor Standards Act, which is federal minimum wage, overtime, and child labor laws. Our mission is to promote and achieve compliance with the labor standards to protect and enhance the welfare of the nation's workforce. Um, we are federal, so we have offices uh, throughout the country in all 50 states and the territories. Um, we uh, specifically in New York, um, I work for the Albany District Office, which covers this shaded area here. Um, we have offices in White Plains, um, Albany, Syracuse, Rochester, and Buffalo. Um, we also have a New York City District Office um, and a Long Island District Office, and I've included the phone numbers there. Um, my contact information will be at the end of the presentation, so please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, but you can also reach out to the office that covers your area if you would like to do so. Okay, um, so Wage and Hour um, is a civil law enforcement agency, like I was mentioning. Um, we enforce a number of different federal labor laws, um, the Fair Labor Standards Act being probably the most notable one. Uh, we also enforce Family Medical Leave, uh, MISPA, or the Migrant and Seasonal Agricultural Worker Protection Act. Um, we enforce OSHA field sanitation standards um, uh, when employers have uh, H-1B, H-2B, or H-2A visa workers. We enforce the employer's requirements under those programs. And we also enforce federal prevailing wage law under Davis-Bacon and the Service Contract Act. Um, and just a brief note, we, we enforce these laws without regard to immigration status. The laws cover workers regardless of their status. Uh, so when we do an investigation, we don't even ask workers what their status is because that information is irrelevant to us. Um, and we don't work with other agencies that might care about that, for example, ICE or the IRS. Okay, so I am going to talk today just about child labor. Um, I'm going to go through uh, the child labor protections by age, um, the hours that 14 and 15 year olds can work and the jobs that they can do. Um, what is considered to be dangerous, uh, a dangerous job that's prohibited for all minors, everybody under the age of 18. Um, and there will be links to different to additional resources at the end as well. Um, I'm not going to go into the agricultural child labor laws today. Those are a different set of standards, um, just in the interest of time. I'm going to focus only on the non-agricultural child labor laws. But I have put some links to this information at the end of the presentation, um, if you would like to learn more about that. And I would also be happy to come back to talk about those uh, in the future. Um, okay, uh, so um, the federal child labor laws are designed to protect the educational opportunities of minors and prohibit their employment in jobs and under conditions that are considered to be detrimental to their health uh, or well-being. Uh, so not only do we want, obviously, to protect kids uh, physically, uh, protect their physical and mental health, uh, we also want to protect their opportunities. Um, that's the intent behind the law. Uh, we don't want kids falling asleep in class or not completing their homework because they're working too much. Um, just a brief note, uh, the federal youth employment provisions do not require minors to obtain work permits. They do not limit the hours or restrict the time worked for minors 16 years of age or older, and they do not require breaks or meal periods for minors. These are the federal uh, provisions, uh, but New York State does require these things um, and does limit the hours for 16 and 17 year olds. And Anju is gonna talk to you about that um, after my presentation. Where the federal and state laws differ, the more protective standard applies. 
Um, so for example, the federal law does not require hours restrictions uh, for 16 and 17 year olds. It doesn't have any restrictions for 16 and 17 year olds regarding the, the number of hours they can work, but New York state does. So employers need to know both laws and be in compliance with, with both uh, standards. The more protective standard will usually cover the less. Okay, so um, child, prote child labor protections by age. Um, so if you are under 14, uh, you are limited to work that is exempt from the FLSA, uh, such as delivering newspapers to the consumer, um, acting or casual babysitting. Um, when you are 14 or 15, you can work outside of school hours for a limited number of hours per day and per week. Um, you are restricted in the type of work you can do. Any work that's not specifically permitted is prohibited. And we're gonna talk a bit about what is permitted for 14 and 15 year olds in a second. For 16 and 17 year olds, they may be employed for an unlimited number of hours per the federal laws, not per New York state, um, but they may not work in what is anything that's considered to be hazardous. And we're gonna talk about what, what is considered hazardous also in a second. So for 14 and 15 year olds, there's a list of things they can do and what's on that list is permitted. Anything that's not on that list is prohibited. For 16 and 17 year olds, there is a list of things they cannot do and anything that's not on that list, they would be permitted to do per the federal laws. Once you are 18, you are no longer subject to the federal child labor laws. Okay. So 14 and 15 year olds, can only work outside of school hours, and they may not work more than three hours on a school day. That includes Fridays. This is We see this one a lot. We, we cite this child labor violation quite a lot. They cannot work more than three hours on a school day, which includes Fridays. Um, they cannot work more than 18 hours a week when school is in session. When school is not in session, they can't work more than eight hours a day or 40 hours a week. Um, they may not work before 7 a.m. or after 7 p.m. on any day, um, except in the summer from June 1st through Labor Day, the nighttime work hours are extended to 9 p.m. So they, could, they can't work before 7 a.m. Um, and they can't work after 9 p.m. June 1st through Labor Day per the federal laws. Um, I'm linking here to this fact sheet uh, that has a lot of great information about uh, these hours worked uh, restrictions for 14 and 15 year olds. Um, I do want to point out that there are some limited exceptions on the hours restrictions for minors if they're enrolled in a bona fide work experience and career exploration program or a work study program. Um, fact sheet 43 also has more information about these limited exceptions. Okay. Um, so work that a 14 and 15 year old generally can do, um, 14 and 15 year olds can do most retail, retail jobs, um, cashiering, stocking and advertising. Um, they can do some food service work, uh, like being a server or busser or a dishwasher. Uh, they can do creative work, singing, artwork, playing an instrument, uh, intellectual work, teaching, tutoring, computer programming. Um, certified 15 year olds may work as lifeguards at swimming pools and amusement parks. We have a fact sheet specifically on this, which I've linked here um, in this sentence. Um, any work that is not specifically permitted for 14 to 15 year olds is prohibited. And there is a full comprehensive list um, of these jobs that they may do um, in Child Labor Bulletin 101, which is a great resource um, and is written in very plain language. So it's very easy to understand. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk of briefly about the dangerous jobs that no minor may do um, under the age of 18. So including 16, 17 year olds, no one can do this work. Um, the FLSA, the Fair Labor Standards Act, prohibits minors under the age of 18 from performing occupations that the Secretary of Labor declares to be particularly hazardous or detrimental to their health or well-being. Uh, there are currently 17 hazardous occupations orders. Um, so HOs one through five. Um, so HO one, they cannot work with the manufacturing or storing of explosives. This one should hopefully be very obvious. Some of these will be very obvious, others not so much. Um, I'm gonna highlight uh, the ones that we see more regularly. 
Um, HO2 is one that we see all the time. Um, minors are not allowed to drive a motor vehicle or work out as an outside helper on motor vehicles. I'm gonna get a little bit more into this in, in the next slide. Uh, they cannot work in coal mining, forest fire fighting, forecast fire prevention, timber track, forestry service and logging and sawmilling. Um, they cannot operate power driven woodworking machines. Um, so let's talk about driving um, a little bit. Uh, minors, no one under the age of 18, uh, they cannot drive motor vehicles or work outside the vehicle as a driver's helper to assist with tasks of, such as loading, unloading, or securing cargo. 17-year-olds um, can drive cars or small trucks during daylight hours for limited times and under strictly limited circumstances. Um, so minors cannot make time-sensitive deliveries. That is one thing that they are prohibited from doing under HO2. Um, and so what we see all the time and what we cite employers for all the time is pizza delivery. Minors are not allowed to perform pizza delivery uh, job duties. They cannot be pizza, pizza delivery uh, people. Um, fact sheet 34 kind of goes more into some of those limited exceptions um, in which they would be able to, to operate a motor vehicle, um, but they are very limited. Um, and so this, this driving HO is one that we cite um, a lot. Uh, HOs six through nine uh, that cannot work um, in which in, in work in which they be exposed to radioactive substances um, and ionizing radiation. Um, that cannot operate power driven hoisting apparatus. Uh, I'll talk a bit about that in a second. Uh, they cannot operate power driven metal forming punching and shearing machines, um, and they cannot uh, work in mining other than coal. Coal mining I think was HO three, so they also can't do other forms of mining. Okay, so when it comes to lifting equipment, uh, children cannot operate or ride on a power-driven hoisting apparatus, um, like forklifts. Forklifts are what we see um, more often. We, we see uh, minors operating forklifts, which is a violation of the child labor laws. Um, they cannot operate non-automatic elevators, skid steers, loaders, backhoes, man lifts, scissor lifts, cherry pickers, work assist platforms, boom trucks, or cranes. Um, you are all going to get these slides, so please don't feel like you need to take screenshots or, you know, write any of this down. Um, but, you know, I just want to go through all of these various things um, just so that you are aware um, and highlight the ones that we see more often, like, like forklifts. Okay. HOs 10 through 13, they cannot operate power-driven meat processing machines, slaughtering, rendering, and meatpacking, or work in slaughtering, rendering, and meatpacking plants. Uh, they cannot operate power-driven bakery machines, uh, power-driven paper products machines, scrap paper balers, and paper box compactors. HOs 10 through 12, we see more often than not. Um, and HO 13, they cannot work in the manufacturing of brick, tile, and related products. Um, so when it comes to meat processing, um, children cannot use or clean power-driven meat processing machines like meat slicers, saws, and meat choppers. Uh, meat slicers is something we see regularly um, in delis and restaurants. Miners cannot uh, use them. They cannot clean them. They cannot disassemble or reassemble them. They can't clean the parts. They can do nothing with a power-driven meat processing machine, such as a meat slicer. Um, they also can't do work in, they can't work in most jobs in meat and poultry slaughtering, processing, rendering, and packing establishments. They cannot use, um, set up, or clean power-driven bakery machines, such as vertical dough mixers. Um, bakery machinery is surprisingly dangerous, um, and it is prohibited. Miners are not allowed to operate power-driven bakery machines. Um, they cannot use, set up, or clean power-driven woodworking machines, like circular saws, chain saws, nailing machines, and sanders. Um, they cannot use, set up, or clean power-driven metalworking machines, including metal forming, punching, and shearing machines. Um, we more often see the bakery machinery, and we do have a fact sheet on it, which I've included here um, that you can read. Um, also, miners cannot use balers, compactors, and power-driven paper products machines. Uh, note that 16 and 17 year olds can load, but cannot operate or unload certain scrap paper balers and paper box compactors. Um, under very specific guidelines. And we do have a fact sheet on, on this um, that you can read more about because we do see this one um, regularly. 
Um, and I also want to note that for some of these HOs, including this one, there is an exemption for 16 and 17 year olds if they're enrolled in a bona fide apprentice or student learner program, and if they are employed under very specific and limited circumstances. Uh, Child Labor Bulletin 101, which was linked in a previous slide, has more information on this um, exemption. Okay, um, finally, um, miners cannot operate power-driven circular saws like band saws and guillotine shears, chain saws, reciprocating saws, wood chippers, and abrasive cutting discs. We see chain saws sometimes, um, and they are not allowed to operate chain saws. Um, they're not allowed to work in the wrecking, demolition, or shipbreaking operations. Uh, they can't work in roofing occupations. Uh, they can't do work on or about a roof, so that includes work under a roof. Um, roofing is pretty dangerous. Uh, they uh, And that is one thing nationwide, not so much in New York so much, at least as far as what we're seeing, but nationwide, we are seeing more miners in, employed in roofing. And it's, it's pretty alarming because it is a very dangerous occupation. We have a fact sheet on roofing. Uh, if you want to learn more about that one. Um, and they cannot work in trenching and excavation operations. Oh, I think I went backwards. Okay. Uh, enforcement. Uh, so enforcement of the federal child labor laws is conducted by my agency, the Wage and Hour Division. Um, employers who violate the child labor laws are subject to a civil money penalty, uh, which is a fine. Um, Federal law prohibits the interstate movement of goods produced where child labor violations are found. So that means that if uh, a child works in the manufacturing plant and the plant is in violation of the child labor laws, we can freeze the movement of those goods. They would have to sit where they are um, until you know, the investigative process uh, runs its course. Okay. Very briefly, I'm gonna just talk a bit about our investigative process um, and also about where complaints come from. Um, so we do directed work where there's no complaint um, associated with it. Sometimes we just pick a business and, and take a look and see if they're in compliance. But we also do take complaints. Um, we get them from employees, both former and current, um, parents, guardians, school officials, um, other employers, advocacy groups, and other agencies. Um, complaints are usually submitted in person or by phone. Um, there's no form to fill out. It just, it's a matter of having a conversation with us. Um, the complaints can come from third parties. They are com confidential. Um, uh, legal status is not a concern and there's no fee to file a complaint. Um, very briefly on the investigation process, uh, when we investigate a business, uh, we sometimes we show up unannounced, depending upon the business and the situation. Uh, sometimes we announce our arrival. Um, we meet with the employer, uh, take a tour of the establishment, uh, and then we will um, review records and interview employees. Um, that's part of our fact-finding process to determine whether or not the employer is in compliance. I do want to stress, this isn't our laws are about the employer. Our investigations are about the employer. Um, this is not an indictment of the parents, uh, certainly not of the child themselves. Um, we are investigating the employer because it's the employer's obligation to make sure that they're operating in compliance. Uh, so that's that's our sole focus here. Um, so we, we review records, um, but we also, of course, we do employee interviews because sometimes the records are not accurate or sometimes they are not kept at all. Um, we come to a determination of compliance and then we have a final conference with the employer. Um, sometimes there are back wages involved if there are violations of minimum wage or overtime. Um, if there are child labor violations, then you know there are usually fines associated as well. Um, and so what we're seeking is an administrative settlement um, unless circumstances require our attorneys to become involved. So that's generally um, the, the investigative process. Um, I do want to point out that sometimes we do reach out to school districts. Um, that's just to verify the age of a minor. Um, that's you might you might end up in a situation where if we reach out to you, we might be just trying to verify um, the age of, of the student. Um, okay, so this is, I'm wrapping up here. Um, these are some resources for you guys. We have our website. Um, we have a, a webpage specifically for educators. Um, 
we also have a flyer, which I would really love if if you could help to distribute that to students. We have one in English and in Spanish. Um, I mean, my whole goal, um, ideally, you know, reaching out to your association is just to to educate you guys so that you can help empower these students just to know about their rights. Um, it's important that they know uh, that they they do have rights. Um, that there's an agency that is here um, to to investigate employers in case there's something going on um, to address your questions and concerns. Uh, we would very much love to love to hear from you. Um, and if you could help us kind of spread the word on on the, these rights uh, for your for your students, that would be great. Um, fact sheets and also our child labor bulletin as well. This is me, um, Sarah Decker at the bottom. You can please feel free to reach out to me either by a phone or email, um, or you could contact our office and um, we also have like a general line as well. Um, that is the end of my presentation. Um, I will turn it over to Anju to talk about New York State and then at the end we can take your questions. Thank you, Sarah. I think what we see a lot where I live, at least, is food delivery um, mm -hmm. of all kinds on scooters and unnecessarily driving. Mm -hmm. hmm. I don't know Basically. about that. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't. I mean, you know, I don't think that would be okay either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hi. Good afternoon. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, hi. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Anju Arora, and I am with New York State Department of Labor, and I am their senior labor standard investigator. And uh, we do, again, child labor enforcement in addition to minimum wage overtime. And uh, like Sarah mentioned, you know, we have a bunch of laws also that we enforce, and definitely child labor is one of the big ones. Uh, that we do enforce. Okay, so topics that would be covered today is employment certificate. That's one of the requirements. Uh, even though with the US DOL, that's not required. For state, it is required. And uh, as Sarah mentioned, uh, whatever is uh, more restrictive, that's the one that takes over the present. We will discuss the minors under 14, minors 14 and 15 years of age, uh, prohibited occupations, which is very similar to, you know, what USDOL, you know, applies. And in case, uh, you know, we want to know if something is prohibited or not, we usually go look for, FL, uh, you know, Federal Labor Standards Act, and we usually pick up from there. Uh, hours of work for minors. New York State minimum wage and how to file a complaint. And, uh, you know, our uh, hours of work for 14, are 14 and 15 are very similar to what USDOL has, but 16 and 17, we do have more restrictive hours of work. Okay, so child labor, like we said, there are different level of restrictions for minors under 14 years of age, minors 14 and 15, and minors 16 and 17 years of age. Uh, first of all, we do require employment certificate. Anybody who wants to work, student non-factory employment certificate, usually for minors 14 and 15. Student general employment certificate for minors 16 and 17 enrolled in a day school. Anybody who is not enrolled, let's say 16 and 17, and they can work full-time, then we do have a certificate that's called full-time employment certificate. And that's for 16, 17, not attending day school, and parent and guardian, they must appear in person, except high school graduates. Uh, what do we mean by student non-factory employment certificate 14 and 15? Okay. I just want to show you what a certificate would look like. And generally it's issued by school guidance counselor anyway. So you probably have seen it. 
it's the blue color that gets filled out. This is the front and this is the back of the certificate. So whenever somebody gets hired, uh, a student walks, a minor walks in and he wants to get hired, he must present the employer with this certificate. Otherwise, the employer must not hire him, him or her. But sometimes we do see that these people get hired and they do not have a valid employment certificate. And the employment certificate must remain in employer's possession for the entire time a minor is working with the employer. Once they leave the employment with the employer, then they are supposed to get back that certificate so that wherever they go and want to work, they can present that certificate. What's a general employment certificate? It is for 16 and 17 years of age, usually green in color. This is again the front and this is the back. And it's the same provision that applies that it must remain in employer's possession for the entire duration a minor is employed. Once minor leaves the employment, then he can take the certificate and if he wants to work someplace else, he can present it to the new employer. Once somebody is full-time, either they are 18 or, I mean, not 18, but they are still 17 and they graduated prior to turning 18, uh, they still need to have a certificate or for full-time certificate, which, you know, for students 16 and 17 years of age and they are not in school, they are not doing, and I think even any, you know, homeschooled, they can work full time. And this is a certificate that they must have. But anybody who is minor under 18 for their entire duration, if they are working before they turn 18, uh, they need to have certificate. Employment permit issued by DOL. I mean, they are not issued by DOL. Child performer, I'm sorry. The only issue that's, let me go back. The only working paper that's issued by DOL is, I'm sorry, I think I just moved. Give me a second. Okay, employment permit issued by DOL. If there is a child performer, that's the permit that's issued by DOL. Minors under 18, one copy must be carried by minor. One copy must be kept by the employer. The only working paper issued by New York State Department of Labor is the child performer permit. Uh, a working paper. What do you need? Doctor's exam from last 12 months saying you are physically fit to work. They need to present with the social security card and proof of birth so that uh, you know proper certificate can be issued. It could be birth certificate, driver's license, non-driver ID, learner's permit, or passport. Uh, get, how do you get them? Get your physical exam, and there is an application they must fill out. It's AT17. Search online for NYS AT17. Get parent or guardian to sign the application. Bring application, your physical exam, and proof of age to school nurse or guidance office. This is just a sample of that application and it could be downloaded from our website. Okay, when school attendance is not required. Minors who are at least 11 years old may deliver newspaper, magazines, and penny savers to home and business places. Uh, like Sarah had mentioned, there are few things anybody under 14 can do. Minors under 14, some of the exception when school attendance is not required. 
Minors 12 years and older may hand harvest berries, fruits, and vegetables with written consent of parent or guardian or with parent or guardian present. Uh, 12 years and older may work for parents on their home farm or do other outdoor work not connected with any business. Uh, 12 years and older may help family members sell farm produce from family farm at family's farm stand or farmer's market with written consent of parent, guardian, or with parent, guardian present. Minors under 14, exception when school attendance is not required. Minors who are at least 12 years of age may be employed as bridge caddies at bridge tournaments. Special provisions are made for child performer and child models. Generally, employment certificate is required. There are some exceptions. And what are those exceptions? Golf caddies, bridge caddies at bridge tournament, babysitter, casual yard work and household chores at a residence or for a nonprofit organization, and where the operation of power machinery is not involved. Work on minors' home, family, farm, or other outdoor work not connected with any business or work helping family members sell farm produce from family farm at a family's farm stand or at farmer's market with written consent of parent guardian or with parent guardian present. Okay, generally employment certificate is required. Uh, Generally, employment certificate are required except for occupation for which exception have been made to the requirement to obtain an employment certificate for minors 14 and 15 years old. And usually that's farm service, casual yard work, household chores, and employment of student by nonprofit college or university which they attend or by its fraternity, sororities, and student association or faculty association. What are some of the prohibited occupation? Like I said, we generally look for Federal Labor Standards Act. We do not have our own list, but we very closely follow what's you know given by Federal Labor Standards Act. So again, minors under age 16, they cannot be you know employed painting or exterior cleaning in ex connection with the maintenance of a building or structure operation of washing, grinding, cutting, slicing, pressing, or mixing machinery. And that's where we see some of our cases that come in. Whenever there's a machinery involved, it might be simple thing as, you know, somebody being in the juice bar or something. Whenever there's a machinery involved, we become very cautious. And if there is any injury, we get a complaint from workers comp board and we look at it very seriously. And employment, again, minors under 16, they cannot work in employment in institution of Department of Mental Hygiene, except that minors at least 14 years old may participate in recreational activities as part of an organized volunteer program. And under 16, they cannot work in a factory. Uh, continuing with prohibited occupation, Minors under 16 may not maintain or operate any kind of elevator. Clean the exterior or paint a building, whether from ground level or from an elevated surface. Minors who are 16 or 17, or 17 they may not maintain an elevator or operate one that is not automatic push button controlled or cannot clean the exterior of or paint a building from an elevated surface. Continuing again with prohibited occupation, minors of any age, they cannot engage in any occupation involving the operation of power-driven hoisting machines, clean oil or wipe machinery or adjust machine belts, be involved with the custody or care of prisoners in criminal institution, serve as a helper on a motor vehicle. Again, some of it might be redundant, but 
we usually also apply the same laws, I mean, same prohibited uh, occupation, what, you know, USDOL does. Okay, continuing with that, prohibited occupation. Uh, specified occupation and activities involving hazardous material, explosive, acids, leads, paints, silica, radioactive substances. They are all, they are forbidden to minors of any age. Uh, specified occupation and activities involving hazardous, that's not allowed, are uh, use of equipment, abrasive polishing or buffing wheels, steam boilers, power-driven woodworking, metalworking, bakery and paper product machines, saws, shears, and mills, prohibited to minors of all ages. Continuing with the prohibited occupation, uh, anything again, specified occupation and activities involving hazardous industries, construction, demolition, roofing, excavation, logging, mining, meat packing and slaughtering, brick and tile manufacturing. Okay, hours of work for minor. What I have done, I have attached a, you know, a fact sheet where it kind of lists for, uh, you know, guidance counselor that they can take a look at because we have two sets of hours that we work with. Uh, one set of hours are minors for 14 and 15, and then another set for 16 and 17. And again, in each you know age group, we have two more subsets, one of them when they're attending school, and the second when they are not attending school. When they're attending school, 14 and 15, our hours that are permitted are very similar to USDOL, except one exception we have, you know, when attending school, when school is not in session, I think uh, USDOL has June 1st to Labor Day. What we have is June 21st. I'm sorry. What we have is June 21st to Labor Day. And then we have another subset when they are not attending school, minors 16 and 17 years of age. So this is one of the summary of New York State child labor laws and permitted working hours. As you can see on the left-hand side, we have age of minors. Uh, we have 14, 15 and 16, 17 and First set of, you know, box, it gives you attending school when school is in session. And the second is attending school when school is not in session. So let's take a look at 14 and 15 years old. What's the maximum number of hours they can work? Again, three hours on school days, eight hours on other days, four hours on days preceding school days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And the exception is students 16 and 17 enrolled in an approved cooperative education program may work up to six hours on a day preceding a school day other than Sunday or holiday. Okay. Weekly hours maximum when school is in session is 18 hours and number of days they can work is six days a week. Permitted Time is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. for 14 and 15 years old when school is in session. But when it comes to 16 and 17 years old and when school is in session, they can work a max of 28 hours. They can still they still cannot work more than six days, but their permitted time limit is 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. And then again, there are some exception with the permission of the parent, 16 and 17 years old can work past 10 p.m. And this, uh, uh, you know, thing is very self-explanatory, but if you are really looking into hours, you have to look at it carefully. Uh, you know, 
because hours change when they're attending school versus they are not, and also for 16 and 17 years old. Okay, New York State requires that everybody who works, uh, you know, be it a minor, that they must get paid a minimum wage. And they are also, you know, in, in summer, some of them can work past 40 hours. If they do, then they also must get time and a half of minimum wage. And hours for the uh, minors must be maintained like just any other worker. And one requirement for minors are, if they are going to be work at a premise, their schedule must be posted every week. They must get a pay stub. This is a sample of a pay stub that everyone must get, including minors. This is a period notification, which again, everyone should get it, and including minor. Uh, before I conclude this, I also wanted to mention about meal period. One of the requirements for meal period is anybody who works past six, uh, more than six hour shift, they must get half hour uninterrupted meal period. And that is the case with the uh, minors also. And I have included a fact sheet with my presentation, which can be probably Bob would send you after this presentation. Okay, now how do we file a complaint? You can go to USDOL website. We do have a form that needs to be filled out. It's LS223 complaint form and email and phone number is there that can be used to make a complaint. If you have any questions, we will take that. And also, this is my name, my first name, Anju, last name, Aurora, and my phone number and my email. All right, any question? We've got a couple in the chat. Um, so yeah. this was, I had this question as well. Uh, what happens when a student doesn't have a social security number because they're a newcomer or whatever? I see that the green card and the blue card required a SSAN. Right. Hmm. That's a good question. I have to look into it because usually any other worker, we again don't ask for a status, but I think uh, this uh, uh, work permit that's, you know, however that came about that did require a social security number. So that's generally implied, what has been that's implying that's implying uh you're asking their status then. Right, right. I would look into it and you know I can get back to you on that. Okay. And in the past, if somebody did not have it, did you ask for a US passport or something? I haven't done this. Um or Orphalina. Yeah. Um I consulted with my supervisor from the district and she said it was okay to give her. The student never received it because the student moved, but I was a little bit skeptical about doing it. So that would be good for me to know because I have a lot of students, newcomers, new migrants, and they're interested in working, obviously. They wanted to be um, productive and provide for their family. Right. I can look into that. You know, at present, our policy is no different that we do not ask for status, uh, but uh, I can, you know, find out for you. Ben Roy, ben, ben Roy had an answer. Ben Roy Taylor had an answer in the chat that said that may be an older version of the car. The newer cars don't have a place for SSN. Interesting. Um, yeah. And the federal would not require that. Um, uh, they're not required to have a social security number. For our loans. Yeah, I haven't physically seen a card in a long time, so I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the, in, in the school where I worked, um, the person who did this was our attendance officer. And the kids just went to that desk and she, Nancy took care of it because uh, she had the she had all the kids' records because of uh, uh, you know her her work with her work with the tenants, so it worked out easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. I also have another question, and I'm sorry. Um, 
my students are technically between 14 and 15, the oldest. But there's a couple of times when I get over age student, like I have a couple, they are about, if it's not 16. So those might require the green card, but I don't have that. Where can I get those? Do I able to issue those cards? The students belong to my school currently. I'm not sure where do you get those cards, but I can find that out also because as soon as they, you know, the age they become from 15 to 16, they must have the new card. An employer, you know, whosoever is they are working with, if we go there and we do not see that they have age appropriate card, employer would get a violation. I think it's got to do with their age, not their grade. It's right. It's not the grade, it's the age. So I um, guess you could get, can you mm -hmm. get the cards from the uh, New York State Department of Labor offices? I do not think we ever have given cards. So I am, you know, that's a good question. Hmm. I have to find out because usually okay. since we do not issue those, the only thing we issue is the permit for the, you know, artists and we do not issue yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. So we do not have them. Okay, so I would find out what happens when a student does not have a social security number. Uh, I would find that out. And if somebody did see some cards where the you know, SSN is not required, maybe that is updated. What do you do when a student says they have two jobs and one certificate? A student mm -hmm. cannot work two jobs because it's the restriction of hours. So they can only work one job at a time. So somebody, let's say some, they are working two places and they have one certificate. We walk in some place and if the employer does not have original certificate, we find them in violation. Because we would not know the student is working two places and that's why we, you know, the requirement is if a minor is working, employer must maintain the original with them at all times. We got an Some... answer on where the cards come from in the chat. <laughs> okay, so not, don't have... I don't think they're issued by like a private company. I, I think they're issued by the state. I think the question is just, I think it might Figured be out. DOE, like New York State Department of Education. I don't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. But yeah, nice. Ed. I don't think because if a private company, they don't, you know, I, it has to be issued by the state. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they say, they say New York State Department of Education at the top of them. So maybe that's where they come from. Hi, Ben Ra. Hi, how you, how y'all doing? So pretty much that vendor you can order the cards from um and, and pay for the cards. I ain't paying for anything. <laughs> I mean, I'm but sorry. the card I'm, cheap. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. So I guess so, don't understand. So, yeah. So in other words, um I've had to issue cards in, in, in previous uh situations and in some cases, as a school, we don't have the cards on hand, or we might have the older cards. So this particular vendor, um, will you can order the cards. They come to you. You pay for them. It's, it's, it's small fee, um, and you can issue the cards from there. Um, and that's what I've done. I just thought I'd just share that if folks are interested in buying the cards. Thank um, you. But I guess if Board of Education issues that or something, you know, some other state agency, then it's definitely, you know, that's where you should be looking at. But again, I, since I'm not sure, I'll find out and I would let Bob know. Um, I know Bob has to go, but I just wanted to also point out when you were, what you were mentioning, Bob, earlier about like using like a moped or like a, you know, scooter or something, yeah. uh, that would also not be okay because it, it falls within the definition of a motor vehicle, which is very broad. Um, so that would also be, yep, be a yep, problem. Yep. So we'll track down where the cards come from. We'll track down the SSAN thing, and we'll get um, the handouts and materials to everybody on, as well as everybody who registered for this meeting uh, today. Tara's got her hand up. Yeah, I was saying I used to um, give out the cards. It's the same place where it's the DOE's um, supply yeah, yeah. office, which is in Long Island City. It's the same place where you get all your record, your forms and different things like that. You just order. Um, They have an order form and you order the cards and it's for free. Cool. 
Yeah, I'll get you that information when I um, send the emails out tomorrow with the uh, links to the recording and stuff. Well, thank Any? you, Tara. Well, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, oh, Anju. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, thank you all so much. Unfortunately, I have another meeting at five o'clock, so I think I'm going to end this one and move on. Um, send us send us emails if you have any more questions regarding Department of Labor, and I'll pass them on. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank Thanks, you. Have, everybody. A good, have a good evening. You too. Too many places at the same time. Thanks, Sarah. Bye, Bob.